I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand what squeeze theorem is and how it can be applied to find limits. Normally we will have three functions. One of them will be sandwiched between the two. That is the case. So the statement reads something like this. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x and g of x is less than or equal to h of x when x is near a except possibly at a and limit of the function as x approaches a for f of x is equal to limit of the function of h of x when x approaches a is equal to l that means the limit of these two functions on the outside of gx when x approaches a is a value l then limit of the function g of x which is sandwiched between these two as x approaches a is also l that's what it means and makes sense right so if you are between two values then and if these two values on the boundary are exactly same then the value of that function has to be those values right so that makes sense and this is a very very useful theorem to solve many limits especially uh, trigonometric functions. Uh, we'll take up an example to illustrate the same. The example here is to show that limit as x approaches 0 for x square sine pi by x is equals to 0. Now that's the equation for you. Normally in the limits you could apply the properties of limit uh, and you could say this limit is equals to limit when x approaches 0 for x square times limit when x approaches 0 for sine pi by x, right? You could do that. But the problem is that this limit is not defined. This limit is not defined. Reason is, as you know, we have already dealt with it, that if x is let us say a value which is kind of 2, 4, 6, 8, kind of that. Well, we are talking about small values, but still. Then, pi by 2, multiple of pi by 2, you can say, is 1, right? And if x is a multiple of pi, then that value is 0. So this value actually fluctuates between 0 and 1 as you move close, close, closer and closer to 0. So this limit is undefined. Now, the only way to solve this, I should say, a way to solve this is squeeze theorem. So it could really be applied here to solve such a question. And let us see how, right? So we'll just solve this and then discuss further. So I hope the statement is very clear. So let's begin by finding the boundaries of sine pi by x. Sine or any sine function, right? It could be any sine function. As you know, the value of sine function is always between minus 1 and plus 1, right? That is the range of any sine function, right? Now, if that is the case, then if I multiply both all these terms by x squared, which is positive always, what do I get? I get minus x squared is less than or equal to x square sine pi by x which is less than equals to x square right so this is what I get now if you see the scenario we have this function between these two now we want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 0 so let me sketch this scenario now so what you have here is something like this. The graph of x square, the graph of x square will be kind of like this, right? Graph of minus x square will be kind of like this, right? So these are the two graphs. So this is minus x square and this one is x square. Now see what happens as we approach 0. So the value of sine function, sine function uh, 
times x squared. So if you're thinking about x squared times sine function, something like this, it could be something like this coming in between these two, right? So, do you see it gets squeezed in here? I mean, do you understand? So it just gets squeezed in between. What do you think is the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from left side or from the right side? So as you can see, with the help of this graph, it tends to be 0, right? It tends to be 0. So that is that is what it is. So, so what we find here is if I change the statement to the limit statement which we are working on, we could write this as, let me rewrite this. Limit when x approaches 0 for minus x square, right, should be between limit when x approaches 0 for this function, which is x square sine pi by x, and should be less than limit when x approaches 0 for x square. Now, as you can see from here, if I write 0 here, when, and when we approach 0, this limit is 0, right? And that limit is also 0. Therefore, the limit when x approaches 0 for x square times sine pi by x should also be what? Should also be 0, right? So, therefore, we can show that limit when x approaches 0 for x square sine pi by x is equal to 0, right? So, the same as between these two values is L, right? So, I hope now it is clear. We found that these two limits, in this case, L is equal to 0, and therefore, the limit of the function in between, which is squeezed in between these two, should also be 0, right? So, that is how we could actually uh, prove that the limit of x squared sine pi by x is equal to 0. So, you'll find most of the trigonometric functions like sine and cosine, their range is between minus 1 and plus 1. So, if you have functions with those functions, many of them could be solved in this fashion using squeeze theorem. So, we'll take a couple of more examples just to practice, but I hope this concept is clear to you. I'm Anil Kumar. If you appreciate it, you can put some likes and also share your comments and views. Thank you and all the best.